Hello and welcome to yet another tutorial by Davies Media Design. My name is Michael Davies and in today's tutorial I'll be showing you how to create realistic colored lighting using GIMP. As you can see here I'll be using a studio photo. I do recommend using studio photography for this tutorial. If you have a studio portrait that's probably going to work best otherwise you can just use a general studio photo for this. Anything really that's going to use artificial lighting. If you try this technique on outdoor photography that uses natural lighting it's not really going to look as convincing or as real so I do recommend going with the studio photos. I'll start today's tutorial with a quick lesson on color theory just to help you guys determine which color combinations you want to use for this effect. I'll then get into light sources and how to determine the location of your light sources and finally I'll show you how to perform this technique. I'll be using GIMP 2.10.12 for this tutorial which at the time of this video is the latest version of GIMP. But of course before I get into that I want to direct you guys over to my website at DaviesMediaDesign.com. As always I have tons of GIMP tutorials and Inkscape tutorials on here as well as GIMP and Inkscape help articles, so definitely check that out. You can also enroll in my GIMP 2.10 Masterclass from Beginner to Pro Photo Editing on Udemy, or you can enroll in any of my Skillshare classes by visiting GIMPschool.com. Here is the studio portrait I'll be using for today's tutorial. Of course, you can follow along with your own photo, but you can download this one for free on Pixabay. Just click free download. So here once again is my final photo, and here I used a red and magenta color scheme. Let me just hide these. I also used another color scheme, so this is magenta and cyan. A big part of this tutorial is determining what color combinations you want to use for this technique. And that's why right now I want to do a quick overview of color theory. So all I want to cover is the two different types of color systems. You have the subtractive color system and the additive color system. Starting with the subtractive color system, there is cyan, magenta, and yellow as the primary colors. These colors do not emit their own light. They are going to use the light from the sources around them. And when combined, so when you combine the cyan, magenta, and yellow, which again are the three primary colors of the subtractive color system, you're going to get black. And that's why you have CMYK printers, uh, because this is going to be the best color when printing something to media. On the other hand, the other color system is additive colors, the additive color system. And that is going to be red, green, and blue. These, of course, are the primary colors of the additive color system. These colors do tend to emit their own light, and when they're combined together, they create white. And the additive color system is often used in things like computer monitors or TVs. And, of course, those things have in common the fact that they do emit light. And so that's why these color systems or these color spaces tend to work really well in things that emit their own light. You can consider these two color systems opposites because the primary colors in one system is going to actually be the secondary color in the other system. So red, green, and blue are secondary colors to cyan, magenta, and yellow in the subtractive color system. And it's the exact opposite for the additive color system. So the reason I mention all this is that when you're creating your color combinations, really any of these six primary colors are going to go well together when they're paired up. So in other words, just choose any two of these primary colors, put them in your composition, and it's probably going to look good. The next step in this technique is going to be determining where your light sources are in your photo. So let's come over here into GIMP. And I'm going to come over to a brand new composition. So this is our original photo. And what I want to do is I want to see where the light is affecting our photo in all instances. So in this case, I can tell we've got a lot of light on the face here. We've got a little bit on this side of the face. There's a little bit coming off the shoulder here and there's a lot on the background. So a good thing to do when you're using this technique is to just sort of draw out either mentally or directly on your image window here where those light sources are. So for starters, I'll come over here and create a new layer and I'm just going to name this light sources. Hit the enter key and now I'll grab my paintbrush tool and just make sure that the size is relatively small. And what I'll do is I'll just mark the direction of my light sources. So again, we have light hitting right here pretty heavily. That tells me that there's probably a key light coming from somewhere off camera to the left. A key light, of course, is going to be the strongest light that's hitting your subject. And that is just basically the main light that's lighting up the main part of your subject. In this case, her face. So what I can do is click off screen here, hold the shift key, and then click towards where the key light is hitting. So right here on her face. So that's really the key light. Of course, we're going to hide this later as we're working. And I do want to grab my text tool here and I'll just type right here key light just so you guys know where the key light is. And I'll grab my paintbrush tool again 
And let me come back to my light sources layer. So even though this light right here is pretty faint, I know there's light because part of her face is still being lit up. If there wasn't light coming from this direction, this part of her face would be really dark. Also, this whole side of her body would probably be really dark as well. So I'll hit Control Z. So I know right here there's a fill light coming from somewhere over here. So let me hit Control Z, just hold the Shift key and draw this in straight line mode. So right here I have a fill light. A fill light, of course, is going to be a less powerful light than the key light, and the reason for that is that it makes your photos look a little bit more dynamic, while also bringing out or filling in any of the areas that would otherwise be dark if there wasn't a light there. So now I'll come over, grab my text tool, and I'm just gonna mark this fill light. And let me grab the move tool and just move this into frame. I'll grab my paintbrush tool again, and let me also switch back over here to my light sources layer. The last light that's in my composition is this background light here. So I'll hit Control Z, you could tell because there's just this really bright spot on the backdrop. This of course is just called a background light because it is just lighting up that background. And I think that it's coming from somewhere up top here. I'm not entirely sure what direction and there might also be multiple lights on here. But what I do know is it's coming downward like so. It could also be coming down from here as well and it's hitting this backdrop, and of course we can't see here because her face is blocking it, but it's probably hitting right there as well. Let me just grab my eraser tool. I probably don't need this one. So we know there's a background light hitting the background here. Let me just label this background with the text tool. And I'll come back over here to my light sources layer and grab my paintbrush tool again. Oftentimes there's also a light that's hitting the hair of somebody. In my case, I actually do have a light up there that's called a hair light. You can see if I block it off, some of that hair light is getting blocked now. But in this case, we don't really see a hair light going on. There might be a hair light, there's some light hitting right here. But because her head is sort of cut off here, there's no headroom, it's hard to tell if there really is a hair light. So I'm just gonna forego creating a hair light or marking that there's a hair light here because I don't think it's super important for this photo. So now that we have an idea of the color combinations we wanna use and we know the locations of our light sources, I can now realistically add in the colored light effect here. So let's dive into that technique and we're gonna be using a combination of gradients and layer modes for this. And for starters, let me just put all these labels for the lighting into a layer group. So I'll come over here, create a new layer group. We'll name this lighting labels. And I can just click and drag everything into that layer group and that way I can just hide everything simultaneously there. Now I'll come back down here, click on my model layer, and I can rename this model, of course. Next, I'll come down and create a new layer. And I'm gonna name this one Key Light. And I do wanna add the name of the color I'll be using for this layer, so I do need to decide on the color combination I wanna use for this composition. So choosing from the six primary colors, I'm gonna go with the red and magenta that you guys saw at the beginning of this tutorial. So I'll come over here and type Key Light Red because I'm gonna use red as my key light. I also wanna make sure the layer mode is set to soft light and that this is filled with transparency, and I'll click OK. Now I'll come over and grab my gradient tool and I wanna make sure that the gradient itself is set to foreground to transparent. And I want the shape here to be set to linear. And you also, by the way, want your foreground color here to be red. And so this is the HTML notation for that primary red color. Now you want to draw the gradient on your key light red layer so that it is going in the general direction of where you marked your key light. So it doesn't have to be exact. You also wanna make sure that the red is covering the main portion of the light here, which is the light on her face, really. And you can always change the actual direction of the gradient. It doesn't have to perfectly match the line you drew earlier. But the reason I'm doing that is that I don't want too much red hitting the shoulder or any of these parts because the gradient is traveling in this direction. So I'm trying to make sure it doesn't spill too much there. So we'll go with about right there and hit the Enter key. So for the fill light, I wanna go with a magenta color. So I'll create a new layer and I'll name this fill light magenta. I'll make sure the mode here is also set to soft light and it's filled with transparency and click okay. Now I'll come over and I'll change the foreground color here to my magenta color. So here's the HTML notation for magenta, which you can copy into your GIMP and I'll click okay. So now I'm going to draw the fill light in the same general direction that we marked earlier. And of course I can tweak it a little bit here, maybe like so. And just so you guys can see the different color combinations, here we have yellow, here we have cyan, 
here's green, and then here is blue. So all of these are the various primary colors in either the subtractive color system or the additive color system. I'm just going to stick with magenta and click OK. So that looks pretty good. So I'll click on the gradient and hit the enter key. So we have our key light, we have our fill light. Of course, now we need the background light. And so I'll come over, create a new layer and name this background light. And I'm going to go with magenta again for the background. And I'll make sure that the mode is still soft light and it's filled with transparency and click OK. So now once again, with my gradient tool, I'm going to draw the gradient to match the marker I created. And this time I do want the gradient to cover most, if not all of the backdrop here. And that's because the background light is going to be this entire area. And I want all the background light to be covered by this gradient. So I'll go with about right there and hit the enter key. Now, of course, you guys can see the problem is that we have all these lights interacting with one another and it's causing them to compound one on top of the other. And so now there's just too much color going on. And it just doesn't look real. It looks a little bit too fake or a little bit too contrived. So what I need to do is I need to select the girl here from the background. And to do that, I'm going to use the foreground select tool. And so I'm just going to hold the shift key and click on the show hide icon here to hide all the layers besides the bottom layer. And then I'll come over and grab the foreground select tool. And if you've never used this tool or if you're not familiar with it, I do have an entire tutorial dedicated to this tool. So definitely check that out. Now I want to make sure I'm on my model layer and I'm going to click and drag the lasso tool that comes up first here and just select everything that is going to be outside of my foreground object here. And I don't have to be precise with this and I'll hit the enter key. So all of this area is going to be my background. Now with the paintbrush tool, it's allowing me to draw the foreground here. So now I'm just going to paint the foreground object. And again, I'm not taking a ton of time on this just for the sake of the time on this tutorial. So you can, of course, spend a little bit more time and get all the details in here. But there is a loose selection of the foreground object. And now I'll hit the enter key. And now we have our foreground selected. So I'll hit the enter key once more to apply it. Now what I'm going to do is take this selection area and I'm going to convert it to a layer mask. And that way we can mask out all the excess light going on and just kind of control some of the spillage. So I'll start with the key light here. So let me unhide that. And I'm going to right click on here and go to add layer mask. Under initialize layer mask 2, I'll choose selection and click add. That'll mask everything outside of the selection area. And now let me perform the same thing on the fill light. So I'll unhide that, right click, add layer mask, go with selection again and click add. And lastly, I want to do this for the background. So I'll unhide the background layer, but I want to mask everything that is opposite of this selection area. So I'll hit control I or go to select invert. Once I've done that, I'll right click and go to add layer mask. Again, choose selection and click add. And then I'll hit control shift A to deselect that. And now as you can see, we have a lot more control going on here with the lights. And the last thing I want to do is I want to tweak the layer mask a little bit so that I can sort of further control the lights going on here. And so in this case, I'm going to come over to the red because I think her hand is really red and it's a bit too much. So what I can do is click on the layer mask for this layer, grab my paintbrush, come over here, click this icon to switch back to black and white. And with the color black and with a larger brush, so let me turn up the size of the brush here. And this is a soft brush, so it's at hardness 025. What I can do is just lightly paint out some of the red on her hand just to control that a little bit. I can also do it for her shoulder over here if I want. I'll hit Control Z. I got to make sure I'm on the layer mask. So just paint out some of that excess purple there. And there's our final composition. So here's a before without any of the lights here. So nice evenly lit image and everything is the same color. The light is all the same color. And here is an after. So we've changed the color of the lighting and it's really changed the overall mood of our photo. All right, so that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully you liked it. If you did, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon for updates on any of my new tutorials. You can also check out any of my resources in the description of the video. Otherwise, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.